Welcome to Atlanta's Commercial Real Estate Show, brought to you by Bull Realty, the show for property owners and business leaders. Host Michael Bull brings you market analysis, advice, and opportunities around Atlanta. Welcome to Atlanta's Commercial Real Estate Show. I'm Michael Bull. Thanks for being with us. Today we're going to talk about retail in Atlanta, and I have a retail expert with us, Nick Garcia. He's Director of Leasing with Heinz, and Nick, you handle uh, Director of Leasing for Heinz, and you also handle Atlantic Station, which has, is a great retail environment. How are things going over there? Very well. Heinz has owned that center for uh, two years and are undergoing really massive expansion. Uh, not quite a full renovation, but more like a transformation of it. That project, Michael, is really ahead of its time. It's what everybody wants to be now. It's not just retail. We've got 3,000 residential units, 2 million square feet of uh, uh, what we call Class A office space. We've got an entertainment component. Um, it's uh, the fusion of all those things makes for a very, very it makes for a special type of environment that I think a lot of retailers want to be a part of. So we're you know amplifying a lot of the strengths of the project. Uh, we call it Regal Cinema that's there is the number one Regal Cinema. It's the number one cinema, excuse me, in the entire state of Georgia. Uh -huh. They're going to be doing about a ten million dollar renovation on the inside of their space. H uh, and M. It's the number one H and M store in the southeastern United States. They're undergoing an expansion that'll take them from about 25,000 feet to nearly 40,000 feet. Our central park area, which is kind of like the living room of the project that we call it, um, we're going to be shutting it down later this summer and starting a complete remodel of it that's going to kind of bring it into the 21st century. Um, we're going to scrape the two existing huge restaurants that are there and um, ultimately we're going to kind of dot the landscape in the middle of the park with four or five smaller jewel box scale restaurants. I think that's where the trend is really going in dining. Nobody's you know, opening and uh, building three level 9,000 square foot restaurants anymore. Right. Um, and then the other thing that's really neat that we're doing there as well too, if you've ever been there, you notice that there's just a ton of brick, <laughs> okay? And that the, the project was conceived at a time, it was gonna be kind of a suburban oasis in the middle of an urban, chaotic sort of environment. And a lot of things worked there over the years, but a lot of things didn't. And one of the things we wanna do is kind of break up the monotony of all that brick. Um, and get away from the faux town square Disney look. We want to amplify each of the brands um, and have them kind of be the feature as opposed to uh, the fake looking town square look. And that ultimately draws interest. And when people talk about experiential retail, um, the experience starts with the eyeballs and at the front door. Yeah. So if you've just got a run of generic looking stores with a lot of brick and just a kind of a shingle sign hanging off, that's hard to get recognized. But yeah. when you let a brand amplify their look, yeah. uh, that's going to kind of start the ball rolling. Yeah, I'm sure the tenants like that. They, they do, yes. So do. so what's your pipe to music? What am I going to hear today if I go over there? <laughs> it's funny you mention that. I, I, I just, maybe I'm too busy looking at my phone or whatever all yeah. the time, but uh, I, I don't really pay attention to, to the music uh, playing. Uh, there's always something uh, kind of uh, else that I got my mind on. But yeah. um, uh, a lot of the restaurants, when the patio are open and mm -hmm. they kind of open the nano walls and whatever mm -hmm. their music kind of spills out uh, uh, over and kind of takes over uh, in the center yeah <laughs> what about so you have two new office buildings going up right? yes two new Heinz uh, mm -hmm. office buildings a smaller one uh, that's gonna break ground May 1st it's called T3 uh, which stands for timber transit and tech that is a Heinz trademark we've got two of these buildings one up in Minneapolis another one under construction up in Chicago 100% uh, timber frame construction lead platinum levels of certification uh, strong appeal to your, you know, tech type professions, your different type of creative professions, uh, interior designers, graphic designers. Uh, instead of a lot of retail on the ground level, you're going to have co-working spaces. You'll have all the creature comforts, you know, great gym facility, uh, lockers, bike racks for people that are taking transit there. Uh, that'll be open by the middle of next year. The other. Uh, uh, office building, a little bit larger, about 520,000 feet. It's going to be called Atlantic Yards. Um, that is going to be built in a little bit more normal way that Heinz normally builds office buildings, but it's purposely built to look old. Really? So if you remember what that site used to be, it was the yeah. Atlantic Steel Mill. Yeah. Um, so kind of playing up the history of the site with a lot of brick, steel, glass, concrete, big, tall uh, windows, mm -hmm. open spaces, um, it's going to kind of harken back to the original you know, roots of that site. And that should be open by the middle of uh, 2020. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, this show here, they, they try to make me look older than I am to make me <laughs> look <laughs> like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm really just a young kid. So. Mm -hmm. uh, the timber frame construction, that's interesting. So what kind of timber is that? I, not the 
I'm not an engineer by training, yeah. but I believe it's uh, cross-laminated uh, timber product. And then the joist systems on the floors are typically what you find in a house, I think probably just a little bit uh, uh, stronger. But mm -hmm. um, it's really more about the finish and yeah. the uh, brick exposed walls and the timber on yeah. the roof and everything and the express structure. Um, and it's the open office environment as well, too. Yeah. Um, that sounds really interesting. Uh, there's yeah. some, there's a, Heinz has been a pioneer of this, and there, yeah. there really is not a product like this anywhere in the Atlanta market. Yeah. So uh, I, I think we've got a ton of interest. Uh, so so uh, it's going to have that cool uh, old look, natural look, the mm -hmm. wood look, but also be LEED certified. Correct, yes. Yeah. And those are the environments that, you know, a lot of conscious companies don't just want to lease space. They want to lease space in a place that shares their values. Yeah. So um, uh, that's an important factor in our consideration. And for the up and coming wave of people kind of entering the workforce, that millennial, uh, you know, worker and generation, the last thing they want to do is go to work in a 50 story high rise, glass, marble, yeah. long carpeted corridors. Yeah. They want something open, much, much more expressive. And yeah. uh, the combination of those two office buildings will bring about another 2,000 people on site at Atlantic Station every day, in addition yeah. to the 4,000 we have now. So, yeah. you know, mixed use is kind of the new office, as we uh, say. Yeah, I mean, I, I really like it. I was interviewing a tenant that we're repping that's in mixed use now. Mm -hmm. and, and they had not been in mixed use before, and they really love it. Mm -hmm. You know, they talked about it, and, and, and you can just see the, the smile coming over their face. It's nice when you, like for instance, when you go to lunch, you're not getting in a steel car and driving somewhere. You're walking around, and there's music playing. And unfortunately, a lot of people still commute in Atlanta. Yeah. So when you're on site working, I think employers yeah. want to make that time and experience there as pleasant as it possibly can be. So sure. having a mix of shops and services, places to dine. Um, I, I think it adds to the overall enjoyment for anybody working in one of these environments. Yeah. So, if the, for the retailers and the tenant reps uh, and, and folks that are uh, listening or watching the show mm -hmm. around Atlanta, what type of tenants do you guys want at Atlantic Station now? Who would do well there? We've got a lot of things that do very well. I, I think the trend right now is to bulk, you know, bulk up on the food, and we're certainly doing that. We've got three new restaurants that will be opening up this year mm -hmm. and three more likely next year. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I want Atlantic Station to be more than just a restaurant park. Oh, yeah. Okay, I mean, and we're making the investments in the other uses, whether it be home furnishings, whether it be apparel. But I also want things in there that, you know, again, you've got 3,000 residential units on site there. So you need things like a dry cleaner, like uh, basic services, uh, banks, uh, credit union, um, mm -hmm. things like that, that people can do their everyday kind of tasks and chores, mm -hmm. uh, whether the people who live there or whether people who work there. I, I think those kind of create the most interesting sort of places and environments. Yeah. So as a final question for you for today's show, uh, is uh, retail really dying? I mean, the, the press would tell you that retail is just going away. Well, it's funny. I get email messages and Facebook messages from family and friends going, oh, my God, are you going to be okay? You're going to be out of a job. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of funny. I don't think it's nearly as bad as people think it is. Yeah. Um, the market is tremendously overbuilt. I had an old mm -hmm. boss say this country doesn't have an overbuilding problem, it has an under demolition problem. Right. And I, I think you're going to start to see a lot of older product type or mispurposed product type be turned into something uh, uh, else. So retail's always been reinventing itself, okay? Malls had their heyday, 70s, 80s, even through the middle of the 90s. Then you had the lifestyle center boom and the power mm -hmm. center boom. Mixed use is having its moment right now. Mm -hmm. my, my only hope would be is that it's not done, that it's, that it's not overdone, all right? All right? And, right. Um, uh, for instance, back in the Lifestyle Center days, you had landlords calling their projects Lifestyle Centers just by putting a couple park benches and some trees in front of a line of sidewalk. That's not really the case. I, I, I think tenants are smarter than that and they gravitate towards the better product. Yeah, well, it makes sense. Well, good information, Nick. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me again. I appreciate it. And thank you for joining us out there. Comment. Uh, if you have a comment, uh, please uh, share our show uh, and let us know what you think. And thanks for joining us for Atlanta's Commercial Real Estate Show.